Continuing our introductory study of parametric curves, let's take a look at areas. So the case that we've extensively studied before is a case of a continuous non-negative function over a closed interval and where we look at the area under the graph of the function over that closed interval. And we know that in that case, to calculate the area, we simply calculate the definite integral of the function over the interval AB. And that gives us this red area that we will denote by capital A here. Since we are looking at the curve y equal f of x, formally we can write this integral as integral from a to b of y dx. Now let's imagine that this uh, curve that in that case is a graph of a function um, is represented as a parametric curve with parameter t. So here we are looking at the curve y equal f of x, a graph of the function where x ranges from a to b. And we, we, when we reparameterize the curve as x of t, y of t, and t is on, in some other interval, let's say from alpha to beta. And we're going to ask that the parameterization is such that um, the value of the function x at alpha is a, and the value of the function x at beta is t, in other words. Um, and we're going to ask also that we um, traverse the, the curve exactly once as t increases from alpha to beta. So what that means is when t is alpha, we are on the point of the curve corresponding to x equal a, and as t increases from alpha to beta, we go over the curve and uh, go over each point on the curve, but only once. And for t equal beta, we reach b. Now in that case, uh, we can rewrite our integral. We can rewrite y as a function of t, y of t, and dx becomes x prime of t dt. And now if we integrate against the variable t, then when x is a, that corresponds to t equal alpha, and when x is b, that corresponds to t equal beta. So we integrate now from alpha to beta. So with this setting in mind, let's try to calculate the area enclosed by the asteroid that we have studied in a previous video. Uh, with parametric equations, uh, at least one set of parametric equations for this asteroid is x of theta is 4 cosine cube of theta, while y of theta is 4 sine cube of theta. And you, you may remember that when theta equals 0, we start at this point when x is 1 and y is 0, and as um, theta increases from 0 to pi over 2, x decreases and y increases, and we describe this portion of the curve exactly once as theta increases from 0 to pi over 2. So the area under that portion of the curve over the uh, corresponding interval of x values, this red area here, uh, could be obtained as the integral of y x prime d theta, because theta is a parameter. Integrating from 0 to pi over 2, what we actually obtain is the opposite of this red area, uh, because you see that that corresponds to integrating um, for against x from 4 to 0 instead of integrating from 0 to 4. So we obtain the opposite, simply because we describe the curve, uh, the portion of the curve, from right to left instead of left to right. So we can replace y by its value and x prime by its value, and x prime here is going to be 12 cosine square of theta multiplied by the derivative of cosine theta, which is negative sine theta. So as I said, this negative sign here is because we describe the curve from right to left instead of left to right. And so for what is in the integral, we replace y by 4 cosine, I'm sorry, 4 sine cube theta and x prime by negative 12 cosine square theta sine theta. In other words, what we obtain, pulling the negative 12 times 4 out, we get negative 48 integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine theta to the power of 4 multiplied by cosine square theta. So now we are trying to integrate a product of powers of sine and cosine, and this is something that we have discussed earlier in this course. 
and uh, because both powers are even what we use is uh, double angle formulas to replace these even powers uh, in terms of things that do not contain power so specifically we're going to replace um, sine theta to the fourth by sine square theta squared and replace sine square theta using the double angle formula by 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2 and cosine square theta is going to be replaced also with the double angle formula by 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2 so this is what we obtain and um, if we look at the denominators uh, inside the integral we have two, one half squared in the first factor that is multiplied by one half, so that gives us one eighth, and we can we can pull out this constant um, and obtain forty eight over eight integral from zero to pi over two of one minus cosine two theta squared, which when we multiply things through gives us one minus two cosine two theta plus cosine square of two theta, and this is multiplied by one plus cosine two theta. Just switch the sign, the negative 48 uh, became a positive 48 because now I'm going to look at a over 4 instead of negative a over 4. If we multiply things through, what we obtain is 1 minus cosine of 2 theta minus cosine square of 2 theta plus cosine cube of 2 theta. So we have again various powers of cosines, but we have discussed earlier in this course how to uh, handle these types of integrals. So this is what we're going to do. And the first two terms, 1 minus cosine 2 theta, we can integrate them directly. We can find an antiderivative. An antiderivative of 1 is theta. Of cosine 2 theta is 1 half sine 2 theta. And we're going to evaluate that between 0 and pi over 2. At pi over 2, we obtain the value pi over 2 minus 1 half of sine of pi. And sine of pi is 0, so we just get pi over 2. And at 0, we get 0. In other words, this bracket... Uh, evaluates to pi over 2. Here we have a even power of a cosine, so we're going to use again the double angle formula and replace cosine square of 2 theta by 1 plus cosine twice the angle, in other words 4, four theta divided by 2. As for the last integral, it is uh, integral of uh, odd power of a trig function, and in that case we've discussed that earlier you pull out one of the uh, powers and write that as cosine square times cosine and then replace the cosine square by 1 minus sine square and use u equal sine as a substitution because the cosine that we pulled out is going to be du. So let's prepare for that. We have seen that the bracket simplifies to pi over 2 uh, we have seen that cosine square of 2 theta can be replaced by 1 plus cosine of 4 theta over 2, and I can pull out the 1 half. And then um, we will write this cosine cube as 1 minus sine square of 2 theta multiplied by cosine 2 theta. For this, we're going to be able to integrate um, because we know what an antiderivative of this function is. Antiderivative of 1 is. is theta of cosine 4 theta is 1 fourth of sine 4 theta and for this last term we're going to use our change of variable u equals sine of 2 theta and if we do that uh, well we get this 1 minus u squared multiplied by du um, more specifically 1 half of du because um, the derivative of u here is 2, sin, 2 cosine 2 theta d theta. However, you see that here, if we make this change of variable in terms of u, then when theta is 0, u is sine of 0, which is 0, and when theta is pi over 2, u is sine of 2 pi over 2, which is pi, in other words, it's sine of pi, which is also 0. So we integrate from 0 to 0. And indeed, this integral. Um, simplifies to zero, but um, I'll give a, a different argument for that because normally when we do change of variables in, in uh, definite integrals, we should use one-to-one -one, um, changes of variable, which is not the case here. 
So this is what we've got. And to justify in a different way that the last integral is zero, I'm going to uh, make the change of variable alpha is theta minus pi over four. In this case, two theta is of course two alpha plus pi over two. And that means that my integral in terms of theta can be rewritten as uh, one minus sine square of two alpha plus pi over two multiplied by cosine of two alpha plus pi over two when we integrate against the variable alpha. Of course here, um, if theta is zero, then alpha is negative pi over four, and if theta is pi over two, then alpha is pi over four. So what we obtain is an integral from negative pi over four to pi over four, and here the important thing is that it's on an interval centered at zero, of one minus sine square of two alpha plus pi over two, but that's really just one minus cosine square of two alpha. And on the other end, cosine of two alpha plus pi over two is negative sine two alpha. So simplifying all this, we obtain the integral on an interval centered at the origin, namely from negative pi over four to pi over four, of a function that turns out to be an odd function because we have this cosine squared two alpha minus one, which is uh, even that we multiply by sine 2 alpha, which is r. And we know that the integral of an odd function on an interval centered at the origin is always zero. Well, this is just conf confirming what, um, what it looked like using the simple change of variable. So what we obtain is multiplying what we have in the parentheses by six, we get three pi minus three times the entire derivative of one plus cosine four theta that we evaluate between zero and pi over two. And that's theta plus one fourth of sine four theta that we evaluate between zero and pi over two. At pi over two, we get pi over two plus one fourth of sine two pi, but sine two pi is zero. So we just get pi over two. And at this zero, we get zero plus one fourth sine zero, so zero. In other words, we end up with three pi minus three pi over two, which is three pi over two. And that's for one fourth of the area enclosed by the asteroid. So when we multiply that by four, we get 12 pi over two, in other words, six pi. So six pi is the area enclosed by the asteroid. So here I just wanted to do one example uh, to outline what we would do to calculate areas under uh, a certain portion of a parametric curve. Uh, and we're going to leave it at that. We're going to turn to the next video where we're going to consider arc length uh, for parametric curves. You may remember that uh, you have studied arc lengths for the graph of a function in Calculus 1, and um, I will provide a link to a video explaining that particular case before we turn uh, to the general case of parametric curves.